Hi, this is Chris Howard, host of Plugged In with Chris Howard. BetOnline is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contests, odds, and lines right up to the national championship game. BetOnline is your number one source for all your college basketball wagering. Head to BetOnline today. Stay updated on all the action. BetOnline, the game starts here. Hold on. Why are you making faces at me? What did I say wrong now? <laughs> it's about it. What was? What is wrong with that? <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of On Display. Well, listen to this. If you're listening to this right now, I am probably on an airplane on my way to Vegas, baby, because it's the iconic BravoCon. It's in Vegas this year. So, you know, I'll probably have some type of IV in the next 24 to 48 hours to replenish all of the alcohol that I will consume. No kidding. This is actually a work trip, but not, right? Because when all the housewives from every franchise come together, it it's chaotic and crazy and we're going to have fun. I have some dinners planned. I'm going to have dinner with Erin from New York, who is on next week's podcast. So make sure you guys do not miss that. That's going to be a fun one. And just BravoCon in general, meeting the fans, getting to see you all, giving you all hugs in person. There is like nothing like it. So I cannot wait to meet each and every one of you. So what I decided to do for this episode, we're going to call it a rewind episode week because this episode was so real. It was so informative. It was so helpful. And you guys actually loved it. It's definitely one of your favorites. Jillian Michaels came on my podcast a while back and we had such a great conversation where we talked about diet, healthy eating, exercise, you name it, foods I eat, everything that I do wrong also. So many of my unhealthy habits. She kind of was like checking me. She was laughing at me. I feel like she was laughing at me the whole entire episode. And I get so many people in my DMs that constantly reference this episode, especially when it comes to coffee. So pay attention to that part with coffee and the coffee creamers. You know, she explains the difference between organic, not organic, and you know, the holidays are right around the corner. So I do think it's important for us all just to get some really great tips. Okay. So I don't know if you've listened already, but if you haven't, make sure you guys check it out and listen to it again right now. Just, you know, so you can keep in touch with everything she said, keep it fresh in everyone's head, mine included, because I really, really, really loved this podcast. So here she is, Miss Jillian Michaels, giving us her expertise on all things personal wellness. Enjoy. All right, everyone. I'm actually so excited because I have been waiting for this. She is one of the biggest names in fitness. She's a personal trainer, a successful businesswoman, and you've seen her all over television. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Miss Jillian Michaels today. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. I am so excited to have you. And and let me tell you why. Because every I get so many DMs and questions constantly for me to talk about. So I ask my listeners all the time, what do you want me to talk about? What do you want to discuss? Everyone wants to discuss fitness with me and, and with my personal journey and how I've had three kids, what I do, what I eat. And I have been waiting for the right person to come on so we can talk fitness together. And I am so excited that I got the best of the best with me today. Look, I'm going to be honest. Having had three kids and looking as superb as you do is not typical. So <laughs> not that there's Thank not you. that not that you cannot look absolutely amazing, but it's 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 not uncommon to, to struggle with it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I'm not surprised that people are wondering like how you've done it. Because it's, you know, it's Yeah, I feel like I, I, I get so many questions all the time about like fitness and exercise. You have, I mean, you were on the biggest loser, right? For so many years, you, right. You've done so many things. Are you still like, what are you doing right now with fitness? And I know that you have this amazing app out right now, the fitness app, right? Right. That's like getting 1-800 massage, by the way, like whoever owns the fitness app, app, that that's the score right there. 
all about that simple, sexy promise. And the fitness app says it all. Like, use this app. It'll help you get fit. We're we're big on that at, at my company, Empowered Media. So we we do have a fitness app um, with a host of great trainers that customizes workouts for you in the gym, outside, audio only, all different types of workouts from weightlifting, boxing, yoga, personalized meal plans, meditation, sleep support, community. So we really tried to just take the 10 apps that you have on your phone from like the meal tracker, the yoga app, the running app, and just make it one app, real simple and straightforward. Um, so yes, we we have that. And I think, I believe you were kind enough to let us um, give your listeners a huge discount. So if you guys go to jillianmichaels.com slash on display, you can enter the code on display and you can get a year long membership for sixty nine ninety nine. So thank you so much for well, allowing us to do that. Thank you for gifting us that. I'm going to make you tell us that all again at the end in case anyone forgets <laughs> that. But thank you so much for, for giving my listeners that. I appreciate it. And I, it sounds abs- amazing because there are so many different apps that people use. Like there's like, what, what time do you eat app? the fasting? There's this, there's that there, there's so many different things, right? Crazy. I know you really shouldn't have that. It's totally unnecessary. It should really be a one-stop shop where all your needs are on one platform and that platform syncs with other apps. So for example, the fitness app syncs with everything from my fitness pal to Apple health and Strava app, other workout apps. So it's like it log everything that you're doing in one place to make it as simple as possible. Because at the end of the day, being fit and being healthy isn't necessarily easy. And it does require some sacrifice, some work, right? But it's really worth it. You still want to make it as simple and accessible for people as possible. Right. Right. And I think a lot of people struggle. What is your advice for people who are just getting into it? Like they just want to start working out. They're really, it's not in them. It's not who they are. They're really don't enjoy it it because I I, I personally enjoy it. And I'm actually going to tell you what I do. And I would love for you just because, you know, my listeners have been asking and I'd love for you to tell me what I'm doing right. And what I'm doing wrong as well. Um, I feel like who better than this is like a personal (laughs) training session. Don't be jealous. Everyone. I have Jillian Michaels just telling me what to do out there in the gym, which I'm so excited about this. Um, okay. So let me tell you what I do. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. And tell me if I'm right or wrong. So I'm not, I'm not a really, I'm not a really heavy eater, but I do eat like, so I eat on the weekend. So let me give you, for instance, like Monday, Tuesday, Monday through Thursday. Okay. Monday through Thursday for me, a cup of coffee in the morning. That's just how I start my whole entire life. Do you no put matter- anything in it? Just out of curiosity. Yeah. So this is where I, 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 um, I, the creamer, the French vanilla creamer that they say kills you. That's me. I put it in my uh-uh. coffee. No. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is switch that out. And this is going to sound kind of surprising. Um, But you can use something like organic heavy whipping cream. And the reason people are going to, it sounds totally counterintuitive because it is high in calories. But you're only going to use like a tablespoon of it. And the reason is because it'll give it that really nice creamy texture and creamy flavor. But it has no protein and it has no carbohydrates. So what it's allowing you to do is something called a dirty fast. So I'm sure I'm sure you're gonna ask me about intermittent fasting, or I'm sure it'll come up. If you have that crappy creamer, you're you're blowing it. It's over. It's done. So you really? can cheat that dirty fast out with just fat. That's why some people use MCT oil or medium chain uh, fatty acids, coconut oil. I I don't like the taste of it. That's why I go with organic heavy whipping cream because I just I think it tastes gross in my coffee, um, and that will allow you to cheat out a few more hours without triggering, I don't want to get too technical for you, but when you eat carbs or protein, it shuts down a process called autophagy. And that's exactly why you're fasting. It's basically where your body breaks down dead and senescent tissue. So this is a great thing. You can cheat it out, but fat only. And so I like organic heavy whipping cream because it tastes better to me than other forms of fat. Not because it's the best form, just because it makes the coffee taste better. Now, does that have dairy in it? One of the reasons I use the French vanilla creamers oh. is because they have no dairy. So what you do don't I do? do dairy. Because it bothers me. It bothers my stomach. I can feel it through my soul. Like I go for almond milk when I get it. <laughs> so wait, hold on. 
<laughs> okay, I'm not gonna push you. If it's like a spiritual thing, <laughs> like I, I feel I think... like going to, but I'll eat cheese. So if you're, yeah. so if there's like mozzarella out, I'm gonna eat a piece of mozzarella. But for some reason, like milk bothers me. Does that make sense? All right, okay. If it bothers you, then I would switch to, the, I would switch to like an MCT oil, like a like a medium chain fatty acid, and or like what about butter? Does butter bother you? No as ideal but like a grass-fed butter or ghee for example that's organic clean because that crap that you're taking in the morning is just so is it crap just be honest it's crap oh my god read me the ingredients is it like the one with the artificial flavor or the artificial yes Yes. yeah artificial up the Uh -uh. chain up the thing a hundred percent uh-uh I I see these TikToks about like, do not use these creamers. And I, every morning I'm like, just, I can't, I don't know what what to replace it with. And I only do it once a day. I mean, is it that bad? You're basically what you're doing is, okay. So you have coffee. When do you eat next? Okay. So I have coffee that I very rarely, sometimes I'm so hungry. I'll eat a banana. Like I'll have a banana in the morning tops. The only other thing I'll really eat in the morning is from Starbucks. I like their little egg white roasted pepper egg whites. They say they have like a lot of protein in them and there's a hundred, they're 170 calories, but I enjoy them. They're delicious. <laughs> okay. Okay. I want you to think of it like this. You have to ask yourself, first of all, when I, when I look at anybody's program, the question is, what are they trying to accomplish? Right. So I've worked with people that are endurance athletes. I've worked with people that are morbidly obese. I've worked with people that are trying to beat an autoimmune condition. So it's going to change what you prescribe for them, so to speak, their fitness regimen, their food. So look, with anybody, I'm going to advocate few chemicals in the food as possible, as clean and organic as possible. But at the end of the day, think of it as follows, okay? I want you to imagine your food on a scale of one to 10, one being foods that prevent slash potentially help to mitigate, cure disease. And we all have seen that episode of Dr. Oz, right? It's yes. like organic blueberries and pecans and wild salmon and kale. Like we all, everybody knows what a superfood is, right? Right. And everybody knows the other side of that spectrum, which is a 10. 10 are foods that contribute to disease at a rapid pace. And it's drive throughs and sodas and fake flavors and fake colors and fake sugars and fake fats and hormones and pesticides. Shit that is not food. We all know that. I'm okay with you living one to five. And this is where there's gray area. So a five food is a food that isn't going to cure you and it isn't going to kill you. And that's things like, let's say, a perfect example of this um, was a company I had invested in years and years and years ago before there were actually better options in the category was something like pop chips. So pop chips is a processed potato chip. It's literally just potato and salt and flavor, but no MSG, no trans fats, no artificial colors. no. So if you don't overeat it, right? It's got no nutrition. It's completely empty calories, Zero. but at least it doesn't have poison in it. So when I'm taking those one to five foods, my goal for people is 80, 20. And that means 80% of your calories, I really want to run one, two, and three, right? And 20% of the calories, I really want to run four and five. So it could be organic ice cream. It could be that glass of wine. It could be those pop chips. It could be your Starbucks egg thingies. But where I do not want you to go is the, you know, the overly processed, heavy chemicals, because that shit is just not food. And we could go on and on and on about the havoc it wrecks in your body from genetic mutations in your gut, destroying your microbiome, the lasting impact of doing that. I mean, I could go on and on and on, keep it simple and live one to five and try to choose one to three more often, if that makes sense. It does make sense. I really don't want to let go of that morning. Like (laughs) I really, I'm going to just have to keep it real. I'm going to really stare at it tomorrow morning and think of you. What do you love so much about it? 
it's the, I need the sweetness and the coffee. So I need that. Do like an organic cube of brown sugar and a little almond milk since you're breaking the fast anyway. Oh, okay. So just get like a bar of sugar and, and almond milk and see. How a cute. cube of organic brown sugar is 14 calories, right? Okay. You're not eating massive amounts of sugar that your body is going to become insulin resistant. Like that's not going to happen. And okay. if you have it, with something that has a little protein or a little fat, it'll slow. It'll even slow down how quickly that sugar hits the bloodstream. It lowers the what's called the glycemic load. So even though a food converts to sugar very quickly in your body, sugar is going to convert to glucose very, very fast, right? That's the glycemic index. But right. if you combine it with protein or fat, it slows down how quickly it's going to convert. And long story short, it's 14 freaking calories. Have a cube of brown sugar, organic cane sugar, and a little milk of choice. Preferably organic. Make sure that almond milk is organic, though. Almonds are very, very heavily sprayed crops. They have like 50 different kinds of poison on them. Yeah. If you want to hear where'd you get that this holiday season, Uncommon Goods is your secret weapon. Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. So whether you're shopping for your secret Santa, which I do every year with my family, or your entire family, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they want. I picked up this gorgeous living pumpkin succulent arrangement that added the perfect Perfect touch to all of the other fall decorations I have around the house, which is tons. And with football season in full swing right now, I surprised Joe with this fun little football bingo set, which honestly makes the Giants games a little bit easier to watch this season. Also, the -the on-the-go stacking salt blends collection is so perfect for all of the cooking we do at home. The caraway salt is so good for all of the meats that we cook. When you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. These fine products are often made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S. They have the most meaningful out of the ordinary gifts anywhere. From art and jewelry to kitchen to home and bar, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone. Not the same lackluster gifts you can find just anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they'll give back $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They donated more than $2.5 million to date. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash Melissa. That's uncommongoods.com slash Melissa for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. You believe in organic. You are big on it. It is a real thing. I feel like a lot of people struggle with organic because it's they look at it as something that's right? very expensive. I get know? it. So, so what you have to do then is work around it intelligently. And what that means is you prioritize where you spend the dollars. So think of it like this. Um, you've got, you've probably heard of this, the clean 15 and the dirty dozen. Have you heard about that? No, tell me. Okay. So the clean 15 are fruits and vegetables that have far less pesticide, herbicide, fungicide residue. And that's going to be things with a rind, thick skin, um, and plants that have natural forms of insecticide that require less spray, right? So that's when you're looking at things like an orange or a watermelon or a pineapple. Those things, same, same concept, right? Very thick not thin-skinned, hard for bugs to get to them, less spray. Conversely, if we go with the dirty dozen, you're looking at thin-skinned fruits and vegetables. So the blueberries, the raspberries, yes, yes. But but wait. What about grapes? Talk to me about grapes. I love grapes. They're just sugar balls. I'm not worried about that. I'm fine with you having grapes, but if you can't afford the organic ones, I want you to have the orange, the pineapple, the... Do you see what I mean? So yes. Google clean 15. And if you can't afford organics, that's where you're getting the fruits and vegetables versus the dirty dozen, which are heavily, heavily sprayed. And you might hear back in the quote olden days, which is roughly a decade ago, <laughs> you would hear um, that we're financed by big food and big pharma. 
putting out messages saying, oh, this is all bullshit and a conventional raspberry, meaning a raspberry that isn't organic, right. has the same amount of vitamin C as an organic raspberry or whatever, the same micronutrients, vitamins and minerals. Well, first of all, that's proven to be bull because soil for crops that are sprayed with fungicide, pesticide, herbicide is overfarmed and depleted, which is where the plant gets its nutrients. Second of all, when a plant is forced to make its own insecticide naturally, it's developing more antioxidants and more polyphenols. So it is better for you. But more importantly, it's what you're not getting. And when I, when I tell you this stuff is poison, it is poison. It's designed to kill everything, not just bugs, including all of the microbes, trillions of bugs in your body that are linked to everything from how you age, your cognitive function, your, <laughs> from a vanity perspective, the health of your skin, your immunity, whether or not you get wow. COVID. I'm, I'm not kidding. Whether or not you get long COVID. I mean, it's, it's a big deal. So I can't say enough about how important it is to mitigate foods that have hormones, antibiotics, fungicides, pesticides, herbicides, and you don't need to eat. Like we don't need as much meat as we're eating. We just don't. We just don't eat less of it and put those dollars towards healthier foods. Spend it there. You don't need meat all week long. What is the worst meat to eat? Like which meat should we try to stay away from? Processed lunch meats. The They're lunch meat. so like all the processed meats, those like deli slices with the nitrites and nitrates and the colors and the fillers. When you buy the and... little box of turkey that it's like in the little plastic oh. thing and it's rolled up for you already. It's yeah. such a great <laughs> snack. Don't do it. Oh, get the rotisserie chicken. Get the rotisserie. This is what I do. I get the rotisserie chicken and I snack on that all week long. Love. And get, get that. It's a way better option, right? Or go to the deli and ask them if they have like organic turkey, organic chicken. Poultry is not as bad as red meat uh, because it doesn't have the growth hormones. So, uh, you know, ideally, ideally we would, I would eat this. If you're going to put those organic dollars somewhere and make it dairy and meat. And then, because you always have the option of going with the clean 15 on fruits and vegetables and things that have far less spray and residue. Right. Okay. Well, wow. You know, I'm going to go look it up now and I have to look at the clean 15 because I need to know all these things. I'm sure it's everything I love, like all of my berries and everything that I love. You're Just go organic though. You have the fun. Wait, you so you're telling it. me if I have an organic strawberry, it just, they didn't spray it at all. Is that what you're exactly. saying? Yeah. So is it then dirty or it's no, it's Wash just... it in water. Okay. Okay. Not only is it, not only is it not sprayed with those chemicals, right? It's better for you for, for the reasons I mentioned in that it has right. to make its own insecticide. It, it is grown in healthier soil because there's not chemical fertilizers in the soil that kill everything in the soil. It's, it's just, a, you know, you, I love that you're eating that. That stuff is loaded with all kinds of awesomeness, right? Polyphenols, antioxidants, all the great, all the great things, but you're organic or you're, you're just, you're essentially ingesting chemicals consistently. And I would rather you avoid it and have an orange if, if you can't go organic. Got it. Okay. So let me rewind back for a second. This is what I eat for breakfast. Ready? Okay. The banana, the coffee maybe an egg here or there, like a little, maybe I could go right to lunch. Lunch for me is usually like a salad, right? Or okay. if I'm in a rush, one slice of pizza. If I'm in a rush, <laughs> if I'm in a rush, there is not a good rush food out there for a nice Italian Jersey girl. So I will grab a slice. I, I will not maybe like once a week, just like, cause that's like on my rush day. But other than that, I'll eat like a tuna sandwich. Is okay. that, do you hate canned tuna? I'm sure that's illegal too. No, it, it's, um, look, you can get it like packed in water and you don't need the oil, although you're trim. So, so what I mean, trim is such a, wow, it's like 1970. I just said you're trim. <laughs> um, what I mean, like you're fit. You don't look like a girl that's trying to drop weight. So if you're trying to drop weight, you don't want it packed in oil. Uh, the only concern with tuna 
Because if you eat tons and tons and tons and tons of no, it, no, it can no. accumulate mercury in your body. And, I, and you're perfectly fine to do that. I like to put some olive oil on mine because I'm, I want the healthy fats and I'm not watching calories. So I'll do it with like olive oil and dill and cranberries. And honestly, sometimes I just cheat and buy the tuna at Whole Foods. They have this cranberry tuna. That's, that's already <laughs> done and it's delicious. And I don't want to do it. Yeah, so I'll get like the rotisserie chicken next to it's the cranberry tuna. Is it perfect? I mean, wild caught salmon is perfect, but tuna salad is fine. Try not to load it up with mayo. That's all. Okay. Well, what if you use light mayo? I use light mayo, just a tad of light mayo. God, I don't even remember what's in the light mayo, but if it's filled with shit, I would rather you use. <laughs> I, would rather, I would rather you switch to, to olive oil. Jesus, you are oh. like, I'm going to have to change my whole life after this podcast. You're not. You're not. <laughs> Look, you, here's the thing. You're, I'm just trying to take, the, unfortunately, the way I look at food now, and I say unfortunately is because you lose your, you start to lose your relatability. And I, and I can see that. The problem is, I talk to doctors all day long and the doctors I talk to specialize in being essentially an upstreamist, meaning they don't like to treat their patients with medications. They do if they need to, but an upstreamist is a person that goes, all right, why is your thyroid fucked up? Not let me throw drugs at the problem, right? They will if they need to, but they want to know why you have PCOS and they want to look at that and see if they can help you with lifestyle, food, and a host of other things. So when I talk to th this variety of doctors, you know, like there's this one doctor named Dr. Uma Naidu. She wrote an incredible book called This Is Your Brain on Food. And it she really looks at mood, anxiety, depression, all of the different ways your food impacts your brain chemistry. So when you tell me things like I'm having this creamer, all I know in my brain is I'm like, oh my God, she's going to get genetic mutations in her gut and it's going to fuck up her body's natural ability to process insulin over time. Like that's what I know in my head. So you're like, what's the matter with you? It's just this little creamer, but I'm seeing it every time. And it's a total different food, light. Right. Yes. Right. Every time I look at food, I'm like, that can save your life. That can kill you. So I'm always going to try to find the swap that will go from killing you to saving your life. And if I can't get you to save your life, then I'm going to try to go somewhere in the middle, like that cube of sugar over the splash of organic almond milk. Oh my God. I'm going to do it. That I'm going to make a promise to you that I'm going to do because I, I, I have guilt about it when I do do it. Cause I know it's not the <laughs> right thing. And now if I'm having a personal session with Jillian Michaels, I'm going to listen to you. I am going to listen to what you're telling me today. Okay. So we got past it. And I, and I've heard a lot that we need to get back to like understanding our relationships with food, right? Like you need to understand there's, there is a little bit of a relationship with, with me and that coffee in the morning. I have a relationship. Like I, I cannot it. wait to yeah. get out of bed and grab yeah. my creamer. And if someone drank all my creamer and it's not there in the morning, I lose my shit. Like my day starts <laughs> off wrong. I am annoyed. I am aggravated. I'm like, who would ever drink the last of the creamer at their nighttime coffee? Like that was very rude. I get so <laughs> insulted. I really do. I get pissed, actually. You can oh. see it all over my face. But anyway, moving yeah, no, on. No, I do understand. I understand. I do. It's an emotional I thing I have with that cup of coffee in the morning. And I'm not even a call. Like, it's just one time a day, really. Maybe sometimes I'll grab a Starbucks. But moving on. Hold on. For dinner. For <laughs> hold dinner, on. Is your coffee organic? I forgot to ask you. No. Does Why? coffee have to be our, I don't know. I like oh, Folgers. Yes. I just buy Folgers. Oh my God. God. Dude, if anyone, I just need to tell my listeners, if you guys can see her facial expressions <laughs> and how she's reacting to everything I'm saying, it is like I said the worst thing she's ever heard in her life. Oh God, <laughs> she's Folgers. holding her head, guys. She is literally holding her head. Oh my head. God. It's like drinking two buck chuck, but adding like a shot of poison into it. All right. First of all, wait, no Folgers? Uh, no, uh, no organic. Okay. First of all, organic coffee. Then we can get into gourmet coffee. Coffee is the, one of the heaviest sprayed crops in the world. I think it's second only to cotton. So it's got that much crap and poison on it. Conversely, if you switch to organic coffee, you're getting all kinds of awesomeness, antioxidants, polyphenols. And if you switch it to cold brew, 
you're getting less of the tannins and the acids and the it does have it long story short it can strip out some of the um some of the oils that aren't as good for you so cold brew would be ideal right you can make it cold brew and heat it up if you want to skip that and just tell me to go fuck myself on that one i'm no, fine no, no. i'm gonna get organic coffee to organic no, no, organic. I'm going to go, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get organic coffee. I'm going to get the little cube, the little brown cube, 14, I feel better. whatever That's you said, good. 14 grams just of sugar. Eight, yeah. This baby says 14 and calories worth of sugar. 14 grams of sugar. <laughs> no, 14. <laughs> no, it's 14 calories of sugar. Okay. So see listeners, I obviously don't know what I'm doing. So don't ask me how I stay in shape. I don't know. <laughs> Cause here's what you're doing. You're exercising obviously, and you're not eating a ton. So, so what happens is that don't forget the second aspect of food that we haven't touched on is that food contains calories. Calories are units of energy. So food has micronutrients, right? Vitamins, minerals, all the good things, antioxidants, polyphenols, all the awesomeness, okay? But totally separate and apart, it also holds energy. So weight, believe it or not, and we can, you know, I've gotten a million arguments with different people about this, but at the end of the day, weight is determined by how much energy you take in. And while They'll tell you like, oh, that's not true because when you eat really healthy, you don't overeat bullshit. I've seen people do it a million times because they're like, I'm eating so healthy. I don't know why I'm gaining weight. I'm like, well, you had three avocados, a bag of cashews. so And a whole package of chicken. Bingo. Okay. So, so energy is energy. And when, you, how do you think bears hibernate for the winter? They're eating all the awesome stuff, right? Wild salmon, fruits, nuts, berries, but somehow they pack on enough fat to not eat for months at a time. They're not getting ruffles. I mean, I hope not. So okay. with, with that said, you are not overeating. So you're balancing your energy in and your energy out. That's fantastic, right? So if there's no weight gain and you're not trying to lose weight, you're exercising. So that's one of the best ways to support your hormone balance, autophagy, which is when the body cleans up the dead senescent stuff, your muscle maintenance, your bone density, your cardiovascular health. It's the number one form of preventative medicine. I'm just looking at over time, because remember, fit people can still get cancer. Skinny people, and I'm saying skinny because I'm saying they're not fit, right? They're just not overweight. They don't have an excess of body fat. Can still get diabetes and heart disease and all of those things. Just because you might not be overweight, it does not mean that you cannot get very, very sick from all the crap in the food. So you right. need to think about both. Okay. And then listen, for dinner, I'm having a little piece of meat every night, usually like a little grilled chicken, a vegetable, and maybe a little rice or like I'll make my kids the baked potato and I'll like take two scoops. I'll try to stay away from carbs during the week for dinner not so much for lunch. And, and I work out like an hour a day, six days a week. And I want to talk to you for a minute about workouts. Hold on. Why are you making faces at me? What did I say wrong now? <laughs> it's about it. What was, what, what is wrong with that? <laughs> you don't need to avoid carbohydrates and you shouldn't. Okay. Um, but I, I don't want to like of the indulge in them during the week. Right. Cause I'll eat pasta on Sundays and I'll eat it on Saturday nights. I'll have the bread at dinner. If they serve any kind of bread, when I go out to eat, I eat it every piece of it. Okay. So, but, so that's a poor quality carb and you're doing it in moderation. So that's fine. Right. We're talking about processed flour. Hold on. And one thing I oh. do do with the bread when they put it in front of me is I gut them. I only eat the outside, the crust, but I load it with butter but I do not eat the fatty part. I rip it right off and put it on my side plate there, my salad Can you plate. do olive oil instead of butter? Sure, yes. With a lot of salt, you just dip it in. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, I'll take it because you don't have high blood pressure. So we don't really need to worry about the salt if you don't have high blood pressure. And in fact, some iodized salt is actually good because your thyroid needs iodine and it's hard to get. Wait, so tell me the difference because I always see there's iodized or there's the non-iodized because I use the more in old school, all the old school Italians do. Which one do I want? Iodized. iodized. Okay. What's the difference? So, okay. So iodized has iodine added to it. Iodine you can get in 
God, I mean, a little bit and like oysters and uh, some seafood, but not a ton. You really can only find it in sea vegetables, like wakame, nori, kombu, kelp. So if you're going for sushi, but really, if you get the little seaweed snacks and you have those a few times a week, that helps a lot. But if you're using iodized salt, you're going to be fine. You don't want copious amounts of salt. If you have high blood pressure or, or heart condition, it's a monster no-no. You got to be super chill with the salt, but your your cardiologist can explain all of that to you. Right. Um, but it's it's dangerous for people with a heart condition, as they would know, or blood pressure issues. They got to be very very careful with their salt. If you don't have anything like that, you're salting your food. You're not going crazy. You're exercising, which means you're sweating. So you're going to be sweating out some of that salt. The iodized is adding iodine. Iodine is necessary for optimal thyroid function. So you're you're fine to do that. And the olive oil has the polyunsaturated, monounsaturated. It's the good fats. Those are your good guys. Polyunsaturated, monounsaturated fatty acids. So you're not trying to lose weight. We don't need to worry about the calories there. So we're getting the nutrition and it's just, it's going to be a better fat for you than butter. Okay, done. On Display with Melissa Gorga is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now are probably multitasking. Yep, while you're listening to me talk, you're probably also driving, cleaning, exercising, or maybe you're just grocery shopping. I don't know. But if you're not in some kind of moving vehicle, there's something else you can be doing right now. Getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's so easy and you can save money by doing it right from your phone. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save Save nearly $750 on average. And auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner, and so much more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year. So you're protected no matter what. Multitask right now. Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. Let me talk to you for a second about just workouts real quickly. So let me speak to you about abdominals for a second, because there's the, there's the plank, right? The plank that everyone yes. is obsessed with. All the trainers <laughs> say we need to I plank. Laughing at me. And I think it's hysterical, but I need to discuss these things because this is what people want to know. I want to okay. discuss the plank opposed to the old school crunch and sit up. Like, is there one that is better for you? Um, okay. If we're talking about conditioning your core, right? Because remember, you can't spot reduce fat. So people who do ab exercises thinking they're going to get a flat stomach, it's not going to happen. You have to burn. If if you, in fact, have body fat on top of your muscles, subcutaneous fat, it's going to keep you from having a flat stomach. If that's something that you want, um, crunches are not going to accomplish it. This is a combination of HIIT training and core conditioning, and strength training, because the goal is to burn body fat so that you can see your abs. So separate conversation. If we're talking about functional training, that it's going to be plank and plank variations. Okay. And the reason is because you're working multiple muscle groups simultaneously and synergistically. So if you think about what you're working when you're in a plank, We've got chest, shoulders, triceps, right? You've got your quads engaged. If you do it right, you're squeezing your ass like you're going to try to eat your leggings with your with your booty, right? Squeeze your little butt. Keep it nice and strong. Pull that belly button up into your spine. Flare out your intercostals and your lats and your upper, upper back. Keep the spine neutral. And you've got a ton of muscles working together for optimal functionality, a better calorie burn, better core strength overall. A crunch. It's not as functional. It isolates. Not that I don't do them. I do them, but with a bunch of different exercises. So I if you had to pick them. one, you can do them. You're fine to do them, just as long as you're doing them the right way, right? So a sit-up you don't need. So um, instead of a sit-up, you would do a crunch 
and a reverse crunch, which is going to be way more effective. Because a sit-up, once you get the shoulder blades off the ground, you're now moving into hip flexors, and it, it's not bad. It's just, um, it's not going to accomplish what you want it to accomplish. So what you want to do is keep your chin off of your chest. Think about bringing the bottom rib towards the hip bone and drawing the belly button into the spine. So the lower back is on the floor and lifting the shoulder blades off the ground. Once the shoulder blades are off the ground, you get a full exhalation at the top of the movement, right? So exhaling and drawing the belly button into the spine for a nice contraction and then lowering back down, inhaling on the way down, that's a crunch. Anything higher than that, you, you're done with the abs at that point. So now a reverse crunch is the opposite. You want to rotate your pelvis towards your upper body. A lot of people think, you see them doing things like knee raises and you know inchworms and all these things, but all they're doing is hammering the crap out of their hip flexors. The key to hitting those lower abdominals is keeping the low back on the ground during your ab work and rotating your pelvis so that you're lifting your hips up off the ground and think about bringing the knees towards your nose. So you should be able to slide your hands under your butt on that reverse crunch and back out. Right. Makes sense. Okay. But you're, you would prefer a plank over a crunch if you had to choose. I hate choosing. And here's why I hate choosing. I think all are great. And it's like saying to a heart surgeon, I'm going to give you one tool to perform this quadruple bypass. And they would just be like, but the guy's going to die. Like, you're not going to die. It's just super inefficient. People build, they adapt to the exercise. You want to continuously train the body in a variety of ways from a variety of angles of push and pull with sometimes high reps. Sometimes low reps, obviously adjusting the weight accordingly. Variety is key with fitness. I'll take plank over crunch, but you should really be doing both. So a lot of women out there, they, they're concerned about the extra skin, especially ap- after having yeah. babies. There's yeah. that skin. Is there a solution for the skin besides surgery? A tummy tuck? No. Besides a tummy no. tuck? Is the skin no. ever going to go away from no. anything other than a surgery? Uh-uh. No. Oh, well, that's not I know. Good I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, everybody, like, I, I know, hear a that's lot of people talk I about said. that skin, you know, especially oh, after babies. I know. And, and the, the, the thing of it is, like, I want to say to you, and, I, and I've said this to so, 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 so many women, like, listen, you know, fitness comes down to the serenity prayer. And this is what I mean. You, you got to have the strength to change the stuff that you can. And the stuff that you can usually needs to be changed, right? It's when you're carrying a lot of extra weight and it's life-threatening. And it's causing a host of other health issues that right. run the gamut from erectile dysfunction to glaucoma. Like I could go pancreatic cancer. I could go on and on. That needs to be changed. You are not healthy at any size. That's a dirty, rotten lie. And you got to wonder who's profiting from that lie. Oh, I don't know. Big food, big pharma. Certainly not the person who's overweight. Right. Tabling that. Okay. Then you get into stuff like skin and cellulite and that has nothing to do with your health. It's a matter of aesthetics. I have no problem with that. Listen, if there's something on my body that I could change, like I wish I was taller. If there was a surgery, I would get it. I had a right. huge nose as a kid. I fixed it. My teeth were crooked, fixed them. You know what I mean? Like I would do it. I have no, I have no issue with people changing things that they don't like, but Ultimately, that part of the serenity prayer is the part where it's like, you know, have the ability to accept the things you cannot change and the wisdom to know the difference. Stuff like cellulite, stuff like extra skin, like you're healthy, you're beautiful, nobody's perfect. You had a kid, that's amazing. You know what I mean? Like yes. celebrate the shit out of that. It's kind of incredible. You built a human, you're their leader now. Like, it's, you know, like think, yes, <laughs> think of the, think the right side. And if it really, really, really bothers you, you can get a tummy tuck. And I, I, you know, I've had several friends who've done it. It's painful and it's expensive, but you can do it. It's, it it's an option. It yeah. Well, listen, Jillian, thank you so much for coming on today. I enjoyed every second of this and I have been dying and waiting to talk to you um, about all of these things. So make sure you all head over to JillianMichaels.com. We have a promo code. It's on display. 
Um, they're going to get a discount with this, right? Just for my listeners. Half, actually. I, I even, I was like, it's sixty nine ninety nine for the entire year, usually like one twenty, And I, I was like, how long are we doing this for? So for your listeners, they, I, the answer is it's going for your listeners. So I, I, we don't even offer that. I was like, we don't offer this ever, not for New Year's. Not for so well, just for um, Melissa yeah, Gorga, you're, you're gonna pretty offer special, it. Girl, yeah, I, I have some you're... pretty amazing people that listen to this podcast, so I'm sure everybody is is very excited about it. So, guys, make sure you guys head over to jillianmichaels.com. Thank you so much for today. You were so informative. Like, I can stay here with you for another hour. I have so many more questions. I want to talk about water, like, I want to talk about everything. I can uh, keep going, but I don't want to take too much more of your time. I can make the water tip really simple for you. Ready? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm okay, okay. All you have to do is look at your pee. The key is for your pee to look like lemonade. If it looks like apple juice, you need more water. If it looks like water, you need to replenish your electrolytes. That's simple. Really? So your pee says it all? Everything you need to know. Everybody has different What about when it's forms. really yellow? Really yellow. If you're supplementing like crazy and that's why it's really yellow, but you can tell, right? If it's neon, but if it's dark, darker and more concentrated. You need to drink more water. You're, you're dehydrated. Yeah, period. It should look like lemonade. And if it looks like water, water, you can develop an electrolyte imbalance. And it takes a lot for that to become severe, but it can cause headaches, fatigue, brain fog. And it's, it's not that hard for those people who are pounding like a gallon of water and working out all the time. So simply add coconut water or um, I have no investment in this product. It's called Electromix okay. um, is, is a great little addition and salt your food. If you're, Talk if to me you're about working seltzer. excessively. Seltzer. Yes or Sparkling no? Sparkling water? It's sparkling water, but I always buy like seltzer because I buy cases of seltzer. Sparkling seltzer if I'm out to dinner. Sugar? The sugar? No. Or like so liqueur? seltzer has zero sodium in it. Um, Club soda has the. Does that sugar? sugar? No, zero. It's just liqueur? carbonated water, basically. Yes, 100% all day long. And all the myths you've heard about, like it eating your bones, is bullshit. It's all not bullshit. True. It's not Bullshit. like some people say it bothers your stomach. The carbonation is not good for you. All of this. No, not not unless you personally are noticing like, oh, it makes me feel, I get discomfort. And you, this really is where people need to listen to their body because I have zero issues. I've never met anybody with issues, but every, I'll hear that somewhere. Oh, it can make you feel gassy. I mean, I've never had that problem. That said, listen to your body, but it's, it's not even the slightest bit unhealthy. It's a little expensive. That's the worst of it. Right. All right. Well, this has been so informative today. I promise you, I'm no longer going to use my creamer after oh, this one is done. Yeah, I have to finish geez. the one that's in my refrigerator first. My and I'm going to, and I'm, yes. So everyone, <laughs> you need to download the fitness app, including myself. It seems that I also, Jillian has <laughs> laughed at me <laughs> the whole entire episode, but this was so much fun. I love your personality. You're so great. So thank you so much for coming on and everyone do not forget to use promo code on display and download that app. Thank you, but have a great one. I had a ton of fun with you. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Wow. I mean, really, isn't she incredible? I just love everything she has to say. I can listen to that podcast over and over and over again. She really is so insightful. And I hope you guys took away some helpful things from my chat with Jillian. And if it was a re-listen for some of you out there, I hope you guys caught something new that you might have missed the first time around. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. But now I'm off to BravoCon. So wish me luck. Uh, guys, Joe tomorrow is doing this his thing. He's got to be Magic Mike with Frank Catania and Joe Beningo. I am going to laugh my ass off literally the whole time. So pay attention to my Instagram so you can see some live action because you know that I will be, you know, definitely putting this on my Instagram if I'm not, you know, hysterically laughing somewhere because you know what? You guys know he's going to take it so seriously. Like gag me with a spoon. He's going to take this so seriously. I'm going to want to die. And you know, Frank and Joe B are going to be hysterical. Hysterical. So that is like what I'm really looking forward to at BravoCon. All right, guys. Love you guys so much. I can't wait to hug all of you guys and meet you if you're going to be at BravoCon. Make sure you guys come right up to me and tell me that you listen to On Display so I can have an extra special moment with you guys. Don't forget to tune in next week. I'm going to be with one of my favorite New York housewives from New York, Erin Leachy. And I'm super excited about that because she's an awesome girl. I'm actually having dinner with her in Vegas too. So we will talk 
to you guys next week. Love you so much. Ciao.